Again, good afternoon. I am Eliseo Joseph M. Nakar from Aurora State College of Technology, and I will be your moderator for this afternoon's webinar. Before we go on with our webinar proper, let us first be reminded with the guidelines to be followed at the rest of our session. Number one guideline, this webinar is recorded for documentation purposes and will be posted on YouTube. Please turn off your microphones and cameras. Please do not share your screen or do any annotations. Please observe proper decorum and netiquette. And for your questions and clarifications to our resource speaker, please use the chat box or the, or the Q and A form using the link that can be seen on your screens, bit that ly slash qa dash dict ascot dash dg par. Next, certificates will be provided to those who have attended the full duration of our webinar, answered the post evaluation form, and passed the quiz with at least 70% points. Use the webinar code that will be posted on our screen at the middle of our discussion to access the post evaluation form. And please input valid and active email address when filling out the post evaluation form. Cut off time is tomorrow at four in the afternoon. Our link for our evaluation form can be also seen on your screen bit.ly slash eval dash dict ascot dash digipar. And our webinar will also have a replay using the link that can also be on your screens, seen on your, on your screens, bit.ly slash live dot di, live dash dict ascot dash digipar. And again, for those who will not be able to join our Google Meet because of our limitations in the number of participants, you can still watch us on YouTube Live. The link for our YouTube Live is included in the email of confirmation that was sent to you during your registration for this said webinar. Again, good afternoon to our guests and participants. Welcome to our webinar this afternoon with the topic about digital parenting, brought to you by the Department of Information and Communications Technology, Luzon Cluster 2, the primary policy, the primary policy planning, coordinating, implementing, and administrative entity of the executive branch of the government that will plan, develop, and promote the National ICT Development Agenda in accordance with the RA 10844. Also, we have our pilot programs, such as the free Wi-Fi for all in selected areas in your respective provinces, especially here in Aurora, Tech for Ed Centers, and the National Cybersecurity Plan 2020, and many more. This webinar is also made possible in cooperation with Aurora State College of Technology, having the main mandate as the primary pro as to primarily provide technical and professional training in the sciences, arts, teacher education, agriculture, engineering, technology, as well as short-term vocational courses. It shall likewise promote research advanced studies and academic leadership in the stated areas of specialization. And to start with, let us hear. And before we start with our opening remarks, the objectives of our afternoon webinar is to equip parents on the use of internet and communications technology to bridge the gap between the parent and child relationship and to engage children with motor activities. And to start with, let us hear the opening remarks 
of Engineer Reynaldo TC, Director of the Regional Office of Luzon Cluster 2 of the Department of Information and Communications Technology. Good afternoon, everyone. It's nice seeing Maria Pala interested to join today's digital parenting seminar. I presume na lahat tayo dito ay parents, pero it doesn't stop yung mga single naman dyan to join us. Anyway, the pandemic brought the worst and the best part in our lives. It's obviously naman na yung worst is the effect of COVID to our health. But the best part of pandemic, especially as a mother, is the inclusion family. Dahil lahat nasa bahay. Nakakuso na ngayon yung work from home sa mga working parents. Kaya almost 24 hours magkakasama ang family. This gives the parents a chance to be close with their children. And a great opportunity to spend quality time with our family. Another advantage that the pandemic also brought us is na highlight the importance ng ICT, especially sa education. Dati hindi na pinag-uusapan yung mga online meeting like what we're doing now. Even work from home, wala naman dating work from home. Pag wala ka sa office, kahit ano ginagawa mo, ginagawa mo yung work mo sa bahay mo, absent ka pa rin, di ba? But now, totally nakaparadenship tayo. Puro online na pinag-uusapan na kahit ang DepEd at CHED and even the private sector ay nagbago na ng learning online classes na. Almost biglang pinagbawal ng face-to-face -face sa classroom. And instead, online learning na lahat. Diba? However, this online learning worries a lot of parents. Mostly ang tanong, paano ko maayos ang anak ko? Safe ba ang internet? Paano ko mamapantayan ang anak ko laging naka-online? Bako ano ang website ang kanyang pinupuntahan? At ano ka at iba't ibang papangkatanungan para lamang ma-assure ang safety ng mga anak sa paggamit ng internet. This is the purpose of our today's advocacy or seminar, which is about digital parenting. We will try to find out how parents can interact as well as guide their children to their new digital landscape. As we all know naman, mostly mas magagaling pa nga mga anak natin sa pag-internet. But there are ways to still monitor and assist our children to be safe and secure. This is our topic, how to be a digital parent to our kids. We have no choice but to embrace the new norms. We have to do we have to be the new digital parents to our kids. Sabi nga, think before you click. Good afternoon po. Thank you, Doctor, or thank you, Engineer Reynaldo TC, for your very wonderful message. So our first code for this afternoon session is capital ADPW. Again, our first code for this afternoon session is capital ADPW. Again, this will be used in answering the post evaluation form that you will answer after our webinar and again for those who want to ask questions and clarifications to our speaker regarding this afternoon's topic you can type it on our chat box or access our q and a form using the link that was given a while ago again bit.ly slash qa dash dict ascot dash cyber So let us now begin with our topic for this afternoon's webinar, Parenting in the Digital Age. So let me first introduce to you our resource speaker. Our resource speaker is a graduate of the International Cyber Law and Cyber Operations Training Course by the Cybersecurity 
Agency of Singapore. She also has a bachelor's degree in business administration, major in management. Our speaker also served as a Philippine delegate in the cyber strategy development of the U.S. Air Force and Armed Forces of the Philippines. She is currently the planning officer of the Critical Infrastructure Evaluation and Cybersecurity Standards Monitoring Division of the Cybersecurity Bureau of the Department of Information and Communications Technology. Let us give a virtual round of applause to our resource speaker, Ma'am Diana Jean P. Faustino. Hello, good afternoon. Good afternoon, ma'am. Uh, again, um, thank you, uh, Aurora State College of Technology. Uh, thank you also to Director uh, Racy and also to our moderator for the introductions, Mr. Joseph. So, today I will be discussing digital parenting. So, medyo uh, bi uh, last year, hindi pa ganun ka masyadong matunog tong digital parenting. But while this pandemic uh, happened, masyado nang parang biglang ano, lumobo yung request natin for the digital parenting awareness. Uh, bakit? Kasi digital parenting, uh, medyo challenging daw sa mga parents. Actually, I am also challenged by this uh, kind of parenting sa aking daughter's uh, so let's start. I will be. So we are here in the digital era. So parents, hindi na natin pwedeng sabihin na hindi na natin dap. Hindi hindi natin pwedeng sabihin na yung mga kids natin and most especially our mga uh, schoolers, yung mga ting teenagers, kasi part na ng life natin to. Especially uh, we have the new blended learning. So we have online classes. So talagang uh, kakabit na ng mga daily lives natin etong technology. So we are in this digital era, in the digitalization, it has a bigger impact on our parenting. And actually digital parenting, yun nga, dahil masyadong matunog ngayon, buzzing word na to eh. And lagi siyang associated with us, parents. And, and dun lumabas na talagang kailangan bigyan ng importance o kailangan uh, i-practice yung digital parenting. So, our goal in digital parenting, of course, is to keep our uh, our kids, our children, be safe, of course, on the physical world from the dangers, dangers that surround them and plus to keep them safe, protected from all the online dangers and harmful effects of technology. If we use internet, if you use social media, if you use gadgets, lahat yan may mga kaakibat na, hit na mga side effects na tinatawag. May mga harmful effects to sa atin, especially sa mga kids natin. From our little ones hanggang teenagers, may mga uh, kumbaga dangerous to sa atin as elders sa kanila mas double yung mga effects nito sa kanila as they are in the critical stage, hanggang teenagers na sa development stage pa rin yung ating mga children. So, technology, sabi nga ni Director Ray, ito yung naging highlight netong pandemic, yung paggamit natin ng technology, ng internet. So, almost lahat na, di ba, we associate yung mga transactions natin, yung mga business works and even school works natin with the internet and technology. So, Obviously, lahat tayo gumagamit and obviously, we appreciate uh, na nabe-benefit tayo from using the technology, from using our internet, our devices, and even social media. May mga benefits din to sa atin. But for most of the parents, they see technology as hindrance because napaka-challenging sa kanila kung paano nila uh, magagabayan, paano nila masasabihan yung anak nila na this is enough, this is too much nung paggamit ng kanilang mga uh, gadgets or technology and internet. So, technology, uh, for some, hindi naman... Uh, 
hindi naman na naging hindrance kasi napakadaming benefits. And also, sa mga parents, challenge siya, nakaka-worry siya kasi we see how technology, how these gadgets, how yung internet use nila is affecting their children. From our little ones, even yung mga babies, and up to the mga young adults natin. Or even yung mga college students natin. So, let me share my presentations to begin with. So, uh, who experienced this kind of outdoor activities? Uh, kami, matayo, yung mga parents, meron bang mga students dito? Kasi uh, kami, mga parents, uh, up to 90s siguro, we experienced this kind of outdoor activities or outdoor games. Uh, children before, uh, we mostly spend our time outside our house. Lalo na uh, after homework, after namin magawa yung mga homework namin, in the afternoon, nasa labas na yung mga bata. Playing uh, iba't ibang klaseng outdoor activities. We experience a lot of outdoor, outdoor activities, activities with our neighbors, with our mga kababata, with our friends, and... Sobra namin na-enjoy yung childhood namin sa labas ng bahay. And ang kids today, ito yung common ngayon, di ba? Uh, kids today, uh, we see them na hawak yung gadgets, iPads, tablets, mga mobile phones or laptops, di ba? Or nakatutok sa mga TVs. So, yung mga kids ngayon, hindi na nila masyadong uh, na-experience or hindi sila familiar with the luksong tinik, luksong baka, with yung mga tumbang preso, piko, yung mga ganon. Hindi na nila masyadong na-experience yun. So, if you ask uh, isang bata, tatanungin mo kung nakapaglaro na siya ng mga ganong klaseng laro, hindi niya alam kung ano yun. Or baka hindi nga niya alam na kind of uh, laro siya ng mga kabataan before. Kasi ito na yung mga very common na nakikita natin at house. Nakikita natin sa labas, sa park, sa mall, and even sa school, di ba? Pag break time ng mga students uh, prior the pandemic, hawak nila lahat is gadgets. So we see our kids, our children, uh, from yung mga bata hanggang mga teenagers natin, they are... Uh, preoccupied sa mga gadgets and other devices nila. So, they engross in playing games, iba't ibang mga online games or offline games and they uh, they spend their time with watching mga videos, mga streaming movies, mga Netflix, di ba? During pandemic, ang dami na nga yung mga nauhook sa mga k-drama, sa mga other uh, mga movies or films uh, through this mga internet or online video streaming. And also they are uh, using this for texting, messaging, of course, for connecting with their friends, with their relatives, and also um, by using social media for entertainment. Diba? And while they are being preoccupied by these gadgets, tayo naman parents, we are so much concerned na ganyan sila, na ganyan natin sila nakikita, na sobra silang uh, occupied or nagiging uh, excessive use na sila with their gadgets. And that's the biggest challenge for poor parents, poor guardians, na how to convince our kids na wag nang mag-overuse 
uh, to avoid yung too much screen time kasi we know may mga side effects yan and later on I will discuss some of the physical effects sa mga kids and some says there are a fine line between yung technology uh, being beneficial or yung advantages niya and technology being disruptive and many of the children today have crossed it. So meaning uh, yung youth today, yung kids today are children na go overuse na ng mga gadgets. So uh, this afternoon, let's try to discuss the digital parenting. But first, what is digital parenting? So digital parenting is teaching kids responsible use of information and communications technology. By the way, uh, digital parenting, hindi lang po ito ang COP or hindi lang to para sa mga parents. This is also includes uh, guardians, yung mga kung sino yung mga nagtitake uh, care sa mga children, example, mga nasa OFW, uh, OFW yung mga parents. So, may iwan sila sa uh, mga relatives. So, guardian sila. So, uh, part na sila ng digital parenting or responsible na nila ang pagiging good digital parent. So, it also involves yung mga ate and kuya, tito and titas, and also yung mga grandparents uh, natin. And of course, our teachers or our professors, they are part of this uh, digital parenting. And in doing uh, digital parenting, we have uh, objectives. <coughs> We're in first uh, uh, is to enable parents to be a model responsible technology use. So as a parent, meron tayong malaking contribution or factor uh, use of technology ng mga uh, children natin. And one important thing we want our children to see from us is the proper use of technology. So, makita and also as part of being a mod model responsible technology use is uh, magkaroon ng balance. Balance in the uh, balance in use of digital of digital or devices and also yung balance dun sa uh, physical world, which is yung uh, to do mga physical activities, yung mga routine natin. And also, part of uh, being uh, model responsible natin is teach them yung good habit in using our devices. So, may balance, may proper use, and good habit. And so, sa atin pa lang pala, mga uh, digital parents, uh, nagsisimula na sa atin. So, kung ano yung nakikita nila sa atin, tayo yung model nila. So, they will copy us. They will try to follow us kung paano natin uh, gamitin yung technology. So, uh, they will try to follow us kung paano natin uh, i-manage yung time natin on using technologies and doing mga other activities offline like yung mga work natin, school work natin, and household uh, activities. So, sa atin pa lang, dapat nag-uumpisa na ang pagiging digital uh, parent natin. And of course, uh, deliberately teach digital citizenship. So, <clears throat> as defined by Karen Mosperger, uh, the authors of digital citizenship, uh, this digital citizen is a person using information technology in order to engage in society, politics, government, and etc. It is the use of in internet while being responsible and effective. So, it involves everyone. Lahat tayong user ng technology. Lahat tayong user ng internet uh, and ng gadget. So, uh, we should be good digital citizen. I-practice natin na maging good digital citizen tayo. So, paano ba tayo magiging good digital citizen? So, meaning, we must act um, appropriately and responsibly online. So, <clears throat> part of our responsibility as good digital citizen is uh, we will follow the do's and don'ts on uh, using online or while doing online to avoid yung mga consequences of our actions sa cyberspace. Kasi sabi, 
lahat ng gagawin natin sa cyberspace is may consequences yan or may effect yan, may impact yan sa atin and sa mga taong nakapaligid sa atin. And take note, there is a forever. Kung naghahanap kayo ng forever, merong forever sa internet, sa technology. Kasi once you put it online, once you post it online, it will remain online. So kahit, uh, even you deleted it, uh, inansent mo yan, or niremove mo na yung post mo, uh, there is called digital footprint. So may naiiwan pa rin sa cyberspace. Kunwari, dinelete mo siya on your, uh, on your own time or on your own newsfeed. Sa'yo lang, pero may naiwan pala dun sa pag dun sa mga pinag-sharean mo. So, that's what we call digital footprint. So, we should be, uh, excuse, we should be responsible on what to post, what to share <coughs> online. And also, part of good digital citizen is we respect others. Kung paano natin gustong i-respect tayo ng ibang tao, online and offline, we should do it uh, sa iba din. Kailangan laging may respect. So, we should avoid mga offending, threatening, mga hateful messages o posts. And also, avoid natin yung mga cyberbullying na yan. Uh, and also, avoid natin yung mga fake news. Uh, as part of being good digital citizen, we should know uh, kung paano i-validate kung fact siya or not. Uh, or fake. Kasi... During pandemic, napakaraming mga fake news na lumalabas. And hindi lang during pandemic. La, uh, lalong dumadami pa yung mga fake news. So, part of being good digital citizen, hindi na tayo dadagdag na nag spread ng mga fake news. So, sa atin, once you... na may nakita, ka, may nakita kang post, validate first bago mo siya i-reshare. Baka mamaya, fake news siya or baka mamaya... Uh, luma na siya, hindi na siya updated. So, it will cause uh, mga panic, it will cause uh, uh, misinformation mis, uh, sa ibang tao. And also, uh, as good digital parent, we should uh, teach our children uh, to, to be a good digital citizen by uh, knowing how to secure themselves, how to secure yung mga information nila, yung mga accounts nila, protect themselves, and also pati yung mga devices nila. Uh, teach them kung paano niya uh, i-secure. Yung mga security features naman on our smartphones, di ba? And also, uh, parents, it is important na ituro natin sa kanila to be a good digital citizen. How our parents na tinuturuan tayo on the proper uh, manners, etiquette, kailangan meron din tayong manners on using technologies. Kailangan maging responsible, good technology user tayo or citizen. Isa yan sa pinaka-objective natin sa digital parenting. And of course, the challenge natin is yung i-monitor yung online time. Ito yung uh, objective ng mga parents malimit or hindi na mag-overuse, ma-monitor nila yung mga online time, screening time ng mga children. We don't want them, our kids, to use their gadgets beyond the enough time. Beyond kung ano yung tama lang. Uh, we don't want them to overuse, misuse internet or gadgets, di ba? And as this overexposure or overuse uh, to gadgets will cause physical problems, mental problems, and other uh, side effects or harmful effects <clears throat> sa mga anak natin. So, but one thing to protect them and be a good digital parent uh, as much as we want, uh, it is challenging. So, hindi talaga madali. Uh, merong mga nag-try and then nag-fail, so hindi nag-give up na. Yung iba naman, keep on trying, pero hindi pa rin nila makita kung ano yung effective, kung paano nila ma-guide, ma-limit, ma-protect yung mga kids nila. 
So here are some challenges for parents or for a digital parent. First is <clears throat> lack of understanding of the emerging technologies. So we notice that our kids today are tech savvy, di ba? Uh, minsan mas marunong pa sila sa atin gumamit ng internet, gumamit ng mga gadgets kesa sa ating mga parents, di ba? So, if we notice, meron ding mga toddlers who knows how to use iPads, cell phones, and mas marunong pa silang mag, uh, gumamit ng gadgets kesa matutong maglakad, di ba? Or matutong magsalita, mas nauuna pa nilang natututunan kung paano mag-open ng YouTube, paano mag- uh, mag-stream ng mga Coco Melon, di ba? So, uh, it is uh, because there are studies na yung advancement ng kids na to, na natutunan nila agad yung mga uh, kung paano gumamit ng technology is our kids today have this natural ability to adapt to new technologies. So, uh, ability na ng mga kids ngayon na talagang matututunan nila agad. Why? Because they are born and raised in this digital era. And also, namulat na sila na on their childhood, yung growing stage nila is nandiyan na sa environment nila yung uh, technologies. So, and while sila may advancement on technologies, on that aspect, we parents naman, we have luck or kulang tayo sa understanding of technologies. And this may may interfere connections to our kids. This is what we call yung digital gap, digital age gap between the parents and the children. So it is the difference uh, between parents and children in the knowledge about the use of, uh, use interactively yung technology. So differences on uh, how parents and kids uh, appreciate yung perception nila on the technologies and how we use technologies. So, this may cause also digital divides. So, <clears throat> digital divides among parents and kids. So, if mapapansin mo minsan, uh, sa bahay, hindi na nag-uusap yung mga parents and kids, di ba? Or wala na silang time, mas uh, tutok sa gadgets yung anak, or even parents, mas tutok na sa gadgets, di ba? Nagwawala na ng time, nagkakaroon na ng guide, na di divide na sila. So, this digital uh, divide, uh, <clears throat> for some family, con this connection na yun eh. So, dun pa lang, unti-unti, hindi tayo uh, aware na unti-unti, nasisira yung connections na meron tayo sa loob ng family. So, nagiging barrier pala yung technology use natin sa family. And of course is in today's situation lalo na we were, we increase our dependency of technology we need to update ourselves in this, in this uh, terms of, in the terms of technology. We can start parents and guardians even at the basics like how we use devices how we use internet, explore natin yung internet, not necessarily na alam natin lahat agad. And of uh, uh, enough lang on enough lang na alam natin gamitin, alam natin uh, kung paano to makakatulong sa atin and sa ating kids and also enough lang to protect and secure our kids. Hindi naman kailangan uh, Kasi galing ka na ng anak mo kung paano mag-explore, hindi naman ganon. Kailangan lang enough. Kasi alam naman natin na challenging din sa ibang parents na aralin ng technology, aralin kung paano gumamit ng smartphones, ng internet, di ba? And of oh, example is, uh, we have this new learning mode, uh, yung mga online classes natin. So our our parents, yung mga guardians natin, uh, we should know yung uh, basic security setup ng mga online platforms na gagamitin. And of, of course, how to use yung mga devices din na gagamitin for online classes. And then yung <clears throat> paano i-set up, like paano mag-join sa online class, paano i 
i-secure yung uh, kids nila while doing online. So, uh, need na talaga natin, sabi nga, part na ng life natin, part na ng parenting natin, yung uh, technology. So, embrace din natin yung technology. This is the new normal. So, mas uh, nagiging uh, associated na tayo, mas nagiging associated tayo with the uh, technology. So, wala namang masama if dagdagan natin yung understanding natin, dagdagan natin yung uh, alam natin on ha, on the technologies, di ba? And also, sabi nga, how can you secure or protect your kids kung hindi mo alam kung ano yung mga danger? Hindi mo alam kung paano mo siya ipoprotect, paano mo siya babantayan, paano mo siya igagide, di ba? So, it is our part. Alam ko, challenging, lalo na sa mga mas elder sa elder na mga parents pero kailangan natin talaga i-embrace ang technologies and of course uh, over exposure to gadgets uh, pinaka challenge talaga sa atin to di ba kasi parang ang hirap na i-control ng mga kids natin lalo na if they are addicted to gadgets yung parang hindi na mahiwalay sa kanila yung gadgets nila. Nakadikit na yata sa mga palad nila yung mga cellphones nila, di ba? Ang hirap i-control. Ang, so, very challenging talaga to sa mga uh, parents and guardians. So, we know that overexposure or excessive use of our uh, gadgets or our devices may cause different uh, health issues such as yung uh, physical health issues, mental health issues, problems and also yung cognitive uh, aspects ng mga development ng kids natin na aapektuhan if they overuse their gadgets. So studies and news uh, shows that too much use of gadgets is dangerous to everyone, most especially, sabi nga, parang nadodoble yung danger nito sa mga kids natin. So later on, I will give some effects. And then next challenge for us is social impairment of children. So, so due to overuse of gadgets, our kids are occupied uh, with their gadgets. So on tendency, they put too much attention with their gadgets. And parang nagiging priority pa nga nila minsan yung technology. And this may cause social impairment. So meaning, parang wala na silang pakialam sa paligid nila. Like for example, uh, dumating yung parents from work, hindi niya napansin na dumaan na sa harap niya kasi masyado siyang focus sa gadgets niya. Uh, sobra siyang preoccupied, wala na siyang napansin sa paligid niya. And also, uh, kala mo walang tao sa room niya, yung pala uh, maghapon, magdamag, sa loob lang pala siya ng room, nag-gadgets, nag-online, nag-internet. So, wala na siyang pakailam kung wala siyang nakakausap sa physical world. Di niya, wala na siyang pakailam or wala na siyang uh, time sa iba, sa mga parents nila, sa family nila. Kasi parang uh, preoccupied sila, hindi lang sa paggamit ng gadgets. Also, preoccupied sila sa mga nakaka-interact nila. So, minsan, uh, mas happy pa sila or minsan, mas matagal pa sila makipag-usap sa mga online friends nila. Kaya sa makipag-usap sa parents, parang hi, hello lang sa parents, pero one to sawa or hanggang gabi nag-uusap, magka-chat yung mga magkakaibigan, yung mga uh, online friends nila. So sabi nga nila, uh, mas marami silang friends online kesa friends offline. So nagkakaroon kasi ng social impairment sa mga children natin. And yun yung nakakalungkot sa mga families, di ba? Nagkakaroon ng disconnections kasi uh, mas priority na nila yung mga technologies. And eto, mga examples, di ba? Ang daming uh, news na lumalabas kung ano yung mga nangyari uh, while uh, kids, kahit yung mga 5 mga years old lang, ay kung paano sila naapektuhan nung sobrang paggamit ng gadget. So, may mga nagsisure, may mga mananlabo ang mata, may namatay pa while uh, doing online games. 
Kasi sobrang dangerous talaga ng overuse. Walang masama if we use technology. We should maximize it nga. Pero ang masama is we overuse and we misuse technology. So, here are 10 effects of gadgets on kids. First is aggression. So, our children become aggressive and moody. So, if you notice, moody, aggressive, dahil yun sa long hours of playing games or using internet, di ba? Lalo na if we try to kunin yung cellphone or yung iPads nila, bigla silang magta-tantrums nila, di ba? And sobrang nagiging stubborn. Ang tigas na ng ulo nila. Sinabi mo ng stop, sinabi mo ng enough na, uh, wait lang ng wait, kaka-wait niya, umabot na yung five minutes niya sa fourth na naman. So, pag sinabihan mo na naman siyang stop na, wait ulit siya ng wait. So, another two hours na naman siya, kaka-wait niya. So, nagiging stubborn sila. Nawawala yung discipline sa mga anak natin. Sobra silang aggressive. And also, uh, Ayaw nilang magpa-istorbo, lalo na pag inuutusan mo, di ba? Galit sila or nagdadabog sila pag inuutusan mo sila. Kasi nai-istorbo sila sa paglalaro, nai-istorbo sila sa pag-internet, sa pinapanood nila, di ba? And it is because of their too much uh, desire. O yung nga ang tinatawag na may addiction na sa kanila. Doon sa gadgets nila. So there are times na yung emotions nila, yung pagiging aggressive nila is nakukuha nila kung ano yung nakikita nila, kung ano yung content na nakikita nila sa internet. And also, yung tantrums, as the most common form of aggressiveness, lalo ng mga toddlers, kung mapapansin mo, uh, if they want na mag-cellphone kasi hindi mo binigyan, di ba? So, magwawala siya. Gagamitin niya yung ganong style niya, pagka-tantrums niya. So, ikaw, ayaw mong uh, maingay or kung nasa labas kayo, ayaw mong pagtinginan kayo ng tao. So, bibigyan mo siya ng gadgets, di ba? So, nagiging uh, ganun na yung tingin ng mga kids nyo. Nagtamang gawin. Magtantrums lang siya, magwala lang siya. So, bibigyan mo siya kung anong gusto niya. <coughs> And yun nga, kung, kung ano yung mga nakikita nilang content online, may effect din yan sa kanila, like yung mga uh, pag-play ng games. So, sa mga kalaro nila, uh, nakikita nila na hindi na maganda yung mood. So, naa-adapt niya yung ganong mood. Lalo na pag hindi maganda yung mga uh, laro nila, nasisira yung games nila. Or also, yung mga napapanood nila, kung anong klaseng content yung nakikita nila, kung puro violence, puro mga inappropriate videos, naa-adapt nila yon So, nagkakaroon tuloy ng uh, conflict from parents and kids kapag uh, umiiral yung aggressiveness ng mga kids natin. Minsan nga nagkakantampuhan pa, di ba? Nagkakatampuhan pa, di ba? Kasi uh, iinit ulo ng uh, anak kasi bawal siya mag-cellphone, bawal siya mag-gadgets. And ang tendency, magtatampo siya sa nanay niya or daddy niya. So, hindi magandang effect on physical on yung behavior niya, hindi pa magandang effect on the relationship ng family. Uh, and also, nawawala yung uh, respect kasi as they becoming addicted to their gadgets, to their games, and to their uh, use of uh, internet, they are more likely to be uh, confront and disobey yung mga parents or yung mga elders. So, As early as this stage, uh, instead of relying too much on their gadgets, i-take down natin sila if sobra na. So, kunwari toddlers pa lang, as early at 5 uh, years old, i-control na natin sila hang para hindi tayo mahirapan. Later on, kapag uh, mas naging addicted, addicted na sila sa games sila, mas mahirap na pong i-control yan. So, minsan, ang um, pagiging addicted or pagiging preoccupied ng mga kids, minsan wala po sa kanila. Nasa sa atin. Kasi uh, we use it, we use the technology, the devices as pacifier. So, as yaya. So, para hindi maingay, para walang magulo, walang magkalat sa bahay. So, ang gagawin niya, bibigyan niya ng gadgets. So, 
that's uh, one of mistakes ng mga parents. Hindi natin alam na nasa sanay unti-unti yung mga kids natin kasi you allow him, you allow your child na gumamit ng uh, cellphone. So, ang, dang, ang tendency, hindi ka aware, unti-unti, nagiging uh, routine niya or nakakasanayan niya na lagi siya nakababad sa uh, gadgets niya. And also, uh, uh, one effects ng too much gadgets is obesity. So, children will rely uh, their playing time in front of screen rather than playing offline tend to be obvious, lalo na this uh, pandemic, di ba? Wala masyadong, uh, hindi masyadong allowed. Ngayon pa lang naa-allow yung mga 15 years old and above na lumabas, di ba? So, ang tendency yung kids natin, naboboard sa bahay. Ang tendency, mag-switch siya na or mag-spend siya ng time niya sa gadgets, sa online. And the more na na-engage tayo sa gadgets, mas nawawalan tayo ng physical activities. And dahil hindi natin naboburn yung mga calories, so minsan kain lang tayo ng kain and then nakas upo lang tayo, nag-games, nag-internet, social media, nanonood. So, Ilang hours yun, wala kang na-burn na calories. So, ang tendency, magiging obese. And as we know, uh, obese can lead to multiple complications such as diabetes, heart attack, or stroke. And so, parents, uh, guardians, we should encourage our kids uh, to have uh, physical activities or uh, do physical play, play and also... Uh, they must understand yung benefits of playing uh, outside or playing offline. Which includes kahit yung walking or jogging lang, running, jumping, kahit simpleng ganun lang. It will create a physical uh, health sa kanila or advantage. And encourage natin sila na mag-exercise to get fit along with those activities together with the family, uh, parang you hit two stone. Kasi, uh, na-encourage mo na siya to do a physical activities or mag-exercise ka, uh, mag-exercise yung kids mo with you, with the parents. So, nagkakaroon pa kayo ng bonding time. So, pwede kayo mag-zumba together, mag-exercise together, di ba? Kasi, uh, out, uh, indoor, uh, mga exercises. So, and also, if pwede na, na i-allow na na makap makapag-playground ulit yung mga kids, makapag-play ulit outside, let's, uh, let's encourage them. Kasi hindi lang natin sila nanonurture uh, physically, pati yung nanonurture natin yung mind and yung social aspects ng mga kids natin. And also, next uh, effects is sleep disorder. So, what time ba natutulog yung mga kids natin? Maabot ba sila ng uh, midnight? Kahit mga 5 years old pa lang, midnight na natutulog? Or nakakapag-idlip pa ba sila in the afternoon? Kasi, uh, sabi nga, or ang hirap na patulogin yung mga kids natin sa gabi, di ba? Kasi yung too much screen time, it makes your children uh, na mahirapan mag falls asleep talaga. Kasi yung blue light na nanggagaling from the screen of their gadgets suppresses yung melatonin nila or yung sleep hormone which nasiship yung body uh, natural sleep cycle niya nasisira. So nagugulo from sigo, dapat 8 o'clock tulog na siya and then magre-restore niya ng energy yung katawan dahil nag overuse siya hindi pa, hindi niya tuloy mahanap na magawang matulog. So, nagkakaroon ng uh, nasisira or nadidistract yung sleep cycle niya. So, imbes na nagpapahinga din yung katawan niya na nagre-restore niya ng energy for next day, dahil ino-overuse din natin yung katawan natin, ang effect din nun is nagkakaroon pa tayo ng other na health problems. So, parents, we can practice at least two hours before bedtime. Wala nang uh, gadgets. So that na hindi na sila 
yung mind nila na at peace na hindi na nila hanapin yung gadget. So, mas madali sa kanila na uh, hum- makatulog. <clears throat> And also is dry eye. So, uh, too much uh, focus nila dun sa screen. It will cause strains, eye constraints. So, yung prolonged exposure at screen causes eye constraints, sobrang focus sa screen, and nawawala yung blinking ng, yung pagbiblink ng eyes. So, blinking times na lelesen, which is uh, napaka-important sa mga eyes natin because it is a natural process, a uh, natural cleaning process para ma-remove yung impurities na pumapasok sa mga eyes natin. And para hindi siya ma-dry, ma-moist yung mga eyes natin. And also, expert says that good eyesight largely depends upon staring at one things at a very at a varying distance. So, kailangan uh, na-exercise yung mata ng mga kids natin na stare at dif- uh, different uh, distances. Hindi lang yung nasa screen na ilang meter ilang centimeters lang ang lapit sa mga mata, di ba? So, paano niya madedevelop yung uh, pagiging far-sighted niya? So, nang nadedevelop lang sa kanya is near-sighted lang siya paglaki niya. So, hindi nadedevelop na lumilinaw yung paningin niya o nadedevelop yung eyesight niya sa mga uh, malalayong distances. If screen lang sila nakatutok, di ba? So, ang, nafo- ang nasasanay yung mata niya na pang malapitan lang siya. And also, dry eyes can also lead to multiple eye infections. Uh, pwede siyang maging, uh, from dry eyes, nagkakaroon pa ng, yung iba nagkakaroon ng complications sa eyes or minsan nawawalan pa ng paningin. So, makikita mo mga elementary students pa lang ang kakapal na ng mga grado ng glasses nila because too much of screen time yung ibang cases and also cancer <clears throat> so connected to the radiation in 2011 the world health organization released yung uh, report that gadgets are considered as to be risk so because of the radiation emissions and other studies prove it na yung uh, radiation ay cause nga ng cancer so By how? Radiation may uh, disassemble atoms and causes yung DNA damage in cells. So, leading to potentially serious side effects which are cancers nga, such as leukemia, skin cancer, uh, thyroid, breast and stomach cancer. So, nakakatakot na yung pag-gadgets lang pala, magkakaroon na ng uh, gantong klaseng effects sa mga kids natin. And we don't want uh, na mangyari, di ba? And also back pain, tennis elbow, neck pain. Akala natin simple na effect, simple na sumakit lang yung tennis elbow, yung back niya, yung neck niya. But this is due to prolonged use of gadgets. If we notice while using gadgets, uh, less yung uh, movement niya, less yung activity niya, di ba? So nakaupo lang or nakahiga lang. So, nawawalan siya ng good posture, nagkakaroon pa siya ng, uh, nawawalan din siya ng proper blood circulations. So, ang tendency nagkakaroon ng back pain, neck pain, tennis elbow, and of course, stress. Some side effects or common effects ng too much gadgets is stress. Hindi lang sa mga kids, but to everyone. So, do you believe na if, Uh, while using uh, gadgets or while doing online, nakaka-feel tayo ng stress. Lalo na yung mga kids natin. Pwedeng na-stress sila while uh, naglalaro, nag- nag-online games. Na-stress sila sa mga kalaro nila. Na-stress sila dun sa mismong uh, mood ng laro nila. And also, na-stress sila kung ano yung mga nakikita nilang content. Nababasa nilang posts, nababasa nilang uh, comments or messages sa internet, sa social media, and also, na-stress sila, kakahintay na tumunog yung cell phones nila, na may notifications na, uh, na may mga nag-message, nag-like, or nag-heart react sa mga posts nila. So, na-stress sila, and also na-stress din sila sa mga reactions na nakukuha nila sa mga certain posts nila, or photos, di ba? 
So, yung dapat na entertainment lang, yung gadgets, yung social media, yung games, ang nangyayari, nagiging stressful pala to sa atin. Source ng stress natin. And we all know na yung stress, di ba? If you consult a doctor, tatanungin ka ng doctor mo, mag-consult ka, masakit yung chan mo for ilang days, tatanungin niya sa'yo, stress ka ba? Masakit ang ulo mo, tatanungin din ng doktor sa'yo. Lately ba, na-stress ka? Kasi, uh, sabi nila, yung stress, it will cause ang mga other health problems din sa atin. And also, lose track of your surroundings. So, same with the social impairment. Isang negative effect ng gadgets is uh, wala na tayong pakialam sa paligid natin. So, nakakasira siya ng relationship, ng family relationship, di ba? Kasi wala na nga pakialam sa isa't isa. Uh, hindi na siya lumalabas ng kwarto or hindi na siya nakikipag-usap sa mga kapatid niya, sa parents niya. So, nakakalungkot, wala ng relationship na healthy, yung may connections, yung may time, yung may bonding, di ba? So, gadgets are killing the development of a child on that aspect, kung paano makapag-socialize. So, instead of going out and learning the way of the world, running, playing, socializing personally with others, they rather stay at home or they rather stay online. So, walang skills na de-develop sa kanila. And also, nasisira yung family relationship. And also, one, number 10 effects is hearing problems. So, naka-headset lang magdamag. Lalo na yung mas malalaking headset, mas malalakas yung sounds, di ba? So, minsan nakatodo pa yung volume. Yung pinaka-maximum volume niya, yun yung ginagamit. So, sa mga jeepneys, if you try na may katabi kang pasahero, di ba? Yung iba naririnig mo na kung ano yung mga pinapakinggan niyang music. So, ganun. By that, also, using it for prolonged hours. So, nagkakaroon ng problem sa hearing. So, minsan, nag-uumpisa lang yan na masakit sa tenga. And then, later on, nagiging parang humihina na yung pandinig niya. And then, uh, worse is, nawawala na siya ng pandinig. So, yun yung mga top 10 na nakaka takot na effect sa ating mga kids. And we should watch out for yung mga ganong effects, lalo na if they overuse gadgets. So, uh, may magtatanong kung ano yung mga screen time lang dapat. So, the World Health Organizations release yung mga recommendations nila or guidelines on screen time by age. So, from babies hanggang 11 to 13 years old. So, let's start with the under 18 months old. <clears throat> The World Health Organization suggested that there should be no screen time outside of video chatting with their grandma or relatives or friends or maninong and ninangs. So, no screen time because uh, our babies don't need gadgets. Diba? Yun naman yung totoo. They don't need gadgets. What our baby needs is <clears throat> physical touch, yung attention ng parents, ng family, and also our love. They need, uh, they are human beings. So, they need human interactions. Uh, they need emotional bond with the uh, parents and with the family. And even uh, emotional bond with their ate and kuyas. So, if hindi not, but yung iba, since na-start na nila, na paggamitin yung mga babies nila so if hindi may iwasan at least less than a uh, less than half hour a day uh, and also yung half hour a day na yun hindi siya dapat continuous na half hour manonood lang siya ng coco melon ng mga chuchu tv or magigames lang on the cellphone sa ipads yung half hour na yun dapat uh, putol putol so, hindi siya continuous para hindi naman na sasobrahan yung uh, yung screen time nila. And of course, do call watching. Kailangan may guidance with the parents. Lalo na mga babies pa yan, ba You should watch, uh, do call watching. 
And also by that, na-explain mo sa kanya, nakakapag-interact ka din sa kanya. Like watching mga uh, nursery rhymes on, on on YouTube. So while doing that, nagko-watching ka, nasasabayan mo, nakakantahan mo din yung anak mo. So that's an emotional bond na with the parents and the babies. And next is for our toddlers, so hanggang 18 to 24 months, Little to no screen time are recommended. So, <clears throat> they are in critical development stage, so they should be away from gadgets as much as possible. So, study says, early exposure ng mga kids natin, ng toddlers sa gadgets may cause delays on their development, like speech delay, <clears throat> yung mga... Uh, delays on cognitive and physical delays nila and behavior kasi they can adopt what they see online. So, yun nga, mas makikita natin, di ba, yung iba, mas nauuna pang mag, matutong mag-gadgets kesa maglakad. Kasi yung motor skills nila naaapektuhan, hindi na de-develop agad. Instead na na-exercise or na-enhance yung motor skills nila, Ang nai-enhance lang is yung mga fingers nila. And if we allow them, kung hindi naman kayang tanggalin, we allow them less than one hour lamang sana each day. So because we should encourage pa rin sa mga kids natin physical activities, interaction with the family, and also yung learning time, hindi mawawala. So if they will watch mga videos online, uh, parents, guardians, let's try to choose. Tayo po yung mamili kung ano yung mga nila. Let's try to choose high educational or quality appropriate sa kanila and do co-watching pa din. Since uh, may mga bagay pa sila, may mga mapapanood silang hindi pa nila maiintindihan. And also, sabi nga, it will create bonding sa inyo and your toddlers. So, mas panatag ka na may explain mo din sa kanya kung ano yung mga pinapanood niya and <clears throat> alam mo kung ano yung mga nag-review niya online kasi remember may mga online content dyan na hindi appropriate sa mga kids minsan biglang nagpa-pop up lang diba? So much, mas maganda, much better na nababantayan natin kung ano yung mga napapanood lang nila and of course preschoolers, so we have online uh, classes so remember po, this uh, recommendation by, by World Health Organization is separate from the screen time or learning classes ng mga anak natin. So this one hour per day for our preschoolers is yung free time nila. So one hour, take note, at this stage, mindful na yung mga kids natin. So they have the ideas and the characters sa mga napapanood nila. So, they can adopt actually kung ano yung, uh, nasa ka, kung ano yung character na napapanood nila. So, kung ano yung nakikita nila. So, as early as this stage, may curiosity na yung mga kids natin. So, mas nagiging maingat tayo dapat at mas bantayan natin sila sa mga online activities ng mga kids natin. Not everything, again, hindi po appropriate. Not everything is maganda na, na maganda yung nakikita sa internet. And also, for our elementary school age, which are 6 to 10 years old, uh, up to 1 to 1 and a half hours per day lang. So again, this is free time. So, hindi naman uh, sabihin ng mga kids mo, puro na lang pagbabawal yung sinasabi mo, ba? So, uh, let's have them free time. Let's have them uh, fun time. Pero, Remember na ituro po natin sa kanila at this early stage na may balance na. They know how to balance their screen time and their uh, offline activities. And also middle school age which are 11 to 13 years old, at least up to 2 hours per day. So at this stage, children can understand the concept of balance. So Kanina sinabi ko as early dun sa kaninang stage pa lang, di ba? Pero at this stage, kailangan alam na nila talaga yung concept ng balance. So, sa sarili pa lang nila, uh, alam na nila i-balance, alam na nila uh, uh, i-maintain, i-discipline yung sarili nila. So, 
so next is uh, these are all remember these are all recommendations ng po ng World Health so again it is still up to the parents up to the guardians kung ano yung mga susundin natin uh, na screen time kung alam naman natin kung ano yung mas applicable and alam naman natin kung ano yung too much uh, hours nila and technology should be encouraged and yet moderated so it is the new generation yung mga kids natin should give should get right amount of knowledge over such advancement. So, kailangan, uh, hindi naman natin pagbabawalan, kailangan lang natin limitahan hanggang dun sa kung ano lang yung tama to avoid yung mga side effects, yung mga harmful effects na na-discuss ko. Because uh, aside from those top 10 na side effects, napakarami pang uh, side effects or harmful effects ng uh, excessive use of gadgets. And also, I believe DepEd has already released screen time guide during the mode of learning. So, later on, baka ibigay ko po. And so, let's move on to seven steps to good digital parenting. So, first is listen to your child or to your children. So, let's listen to them. Let's accept the, the fact na may mga bagay sila, lalo na mga tech savvy sila, masyado ng advanced yung mga kids today. May mga alam sila na hindi alam natin mga parents, di ba? Tapos may mga younger kids, yung mga toddlers natin, sobra silang makwento, madaldal, ang daming tanong. Uh, kailangan hindi natin uh, i-take to as nakakainis, as negative. I-take natin to as positive. Mas matanong sila, mas maganda, di ba? Sabi nga, sign yun na matalino yung kids mo. Kasi tinatanong, and mas maganda yun, tinatanong kanila. So, uh, yung opinion mo, yung sasabihin mo, importante sa kids mo. And also, sabi nga nila, minsan lang sila bata, baka dumating yung time na hindi ka na nila lalapitan para tanungin ka, para i-ask yung opinion mo. So, let's enjoy na makinig tayo sa mga kwento ng mga kids natin. And also, uh, sa mga teenagers natin o kahit mga elementary uh, kids natin, sabi nga, kailangan bigyan naman natin sila ng uh, privilege na mag-voice out. Uh, napakinggan naman natin sila. Kasi yun, yun nga, baka dumating yung time na magtampo sila sa'yo. Uh, isang beses mo lang silang di pinakinggan and then they take it negatively. Masyado silang nasaktan dun sa ginawa mong hindi siya pakinggan. So, next time, hindi ka na niya lalapitan. They will not tell you kung ano yung nangyayari sa kanya. So, nakakatakot, di ba, na hindi ka na uh, aware, di ka na priority ng kids mo na pagsasabihan ng mga problems niya, ng mga happy uh, happy things na nangyayari sa kanya, mga success niya in life, di ba? And also, if we try to give them na mag-voice out yung privilege na, ma na may opinion sila sa bahay, sa family. Hindi mo alam, uh, step na pala yun para uh, magkaroon ng trust and maging comfortable yung kids mo, yung mga anak mo sa'yo. Uh, so, magiging habit na magiging comfortable siya na makipag-usap sa'yo na i-open up sa'yo yung mga bagay na gusto niyang sabihin. Kasi they know na they are... Uh, you are here to listen. Lalo na sa mga teenagers natin, di ba? Minsan may mga teenagers na sensitive. So, once na nabigay mo sa kanila yung trust, once na nabigay mo yung, uh, yung mga ears mo to listen, para uh, makinig sa mga kwento niya, sa mga i-open niya sa'yo, sa mga sasabihin niya sa'yo. So, nagkakaroon kayo ng healthy relationship. So, nagkakaroon kayo ng healthy bonding. Ang sarap sa feeling din na pinapakinggan, ka, pinapakinggan mo yung kids mo and also pinapakinggan ka niya kasi uh, they know and they see na nakikinig ka sa kanila. So sabi nga, di ba, model responsible yung mga uh, tayong digital parents. So nakikita nilang nakikinig ka sa kanila. So ang tendency, makikinig din siya sa inyo. So ang sarap sa feeling na gano'n, di ba? Hindi ma-feel ng kids mo, lalo na ng mga teenagers natin, 
or even mga little ones natin, madadrama na rin yung iba, di ba? Kasi they take it sensitively, they take it negatively, nakaka-hurt na pala tayo ng feelings nila kapag hindi natin sila pinapakinggan. And definitely feel nila na important sila sa bahay and sa ating mga parents. And actually, this lockdown, uh, looking at the positive side, uh, we are given so much time. So much time para magkaroon ng oras, mag, mag, na makipag-usap, ma, makipagkamustahan, mag-bonding sa ating mga pamilya, lalo na sa ating mga kids. So wag natin sayangin yung time na binigay sa atin na magkakasama tayo kung noon more than 8 hours ang parents is nasa office kasama na ang uh, transpo time nila, transportation time nila. So mga 10 hours wala sila sa bahay, wala sila sa uh, wala sila sa wala sila sa uh, kasama ng mga kids nila. So ngayon kasama natin lalo na yung mga Nasa work from home pa rin yung set up ng mga parents, di ba? Let's uh, maximize yung time na to na kasama natin sila. And also, kung may mga nangyaring disconnections, tampuhan sa mga family, so it is, it is the time na ma-reconnect ma ulit tayo sa kanila. Ma-regain natin yung healthy relationship and healthy communications with our uh, children. And of next is... Uh, let's educate ourselves. So, sabi ko nga kanina, one challenge for us parents dun sa digital parenting natin is yung lack of understanding of the emerging technology. So, this is a, this is <clears throat> now yung time para uh, mag-explore din tayo, madagdagan yung understanding natin, yung nalalaman natin on the technologies on our devices, on the internet, kung ano yung mga information na pwede, ano yung mga harmful na possible palang ma-face ng mga kids natin online. So, at least hindi tayo mapag-iiwanan. So, alam na natin paano sila i-guide. Sabi ko nga, hindi natin sila mag-guide, hindi natin sila maiintindihan if we don't uh, know kung ano yung ginagamit nila, kung ano yung meron dun sa pinupuntahan nilang mga websites sa mga gadgets na nagamit nila. And also, we can't deny na mas tumaas yung needs natin on the technologies, di ba? So, sa mga work, businesses, mga transactions natin, and all. So, kailangan na natin talagang pag-aralan yung technology. This is the new normal, di ba? Sabi nga. And next is use parental controls. So, these parental controls can help them be protected while using their gadgets kasi there are a lots of dangers online that our kids can face. So, you can use parental controls on their gadgets on the Wi-Fi at your home. Pwede mong iset up, lagyan ng password, and also on the applications like privacy settings on YouTube, uh, security settings on their social media, mga Facebook account, Insta, Twitter, so, kailangan may mga privacy settings din sila dyan. Naka-up or naka-on yung mga security features or settings to avoid yung mga uh, cyber criminals na magawa sa account nila. And also, you can set password sa mga certain apps na we think na hindi dapat i-open ng mga kids natin. Lalo na if they use yung mga uh, parents' uh, gadgets kung pinapahiram natin sa kanila. And also, sa mga smartphones, if you explore your smartphones, meron na po dyan mga features like you can set a limit or restrict certain apps, set a limit yung mga screen time, pwede mong iset na kunwari 2 hours a day. So, once ma-hit or ma, ma, maka 2 hours na yung anak mo using yung cellphone niya, so automatic mataturn off siya or automatic malalockdown na siya. So, you can use that if uh, may mga parents na hindi kayang bantayan 24 by 7 yung mga kids nila. And also, uh, set ground rules and apply sanctions. So, be strict. Huwag yung magtantrums lang. Huwag yung iyakan ka lang na bibigay ka na agad. Iaabot mo na ulit yung gadget. So, if, ma if uh, you remember bakit ba natin to ginagawa is because we don't want, uh, kailangan natin ma-avoid yung effects 
yung mga a harm ng gadgets, ng internet, ng technology, ng social media, di ba? So, kaya natin ginagawa ito. And also, alam na nila yung weakness natin. So, alam na nila na kapag tantrums lang sila, magbibigay ka na agad. Gagamitin lang nila yung ganong style sa inyo kasi alam na nila magigive in ka sa kung ano gusto nila. Also, you can set ground rules agreed both by parents and by the children. So, mas madali for uh for us and for our children na sundin yung ground rules na uh, isa-set natin kasi you involve them nagkaroon kayo ng brainstorming nagkaroon kayo ng uh, good communications ko ano yung mga ground rules na isa-set nyo and you involve them so na feel nila may involvement sila so another factor yon magiging healthy uh, another factor for a healthier relationship oh, uh <clears throat> And also, may mga uh, ground rules na parang ang hirap sundin kasi hindi pala natin natanong yung mga kids natin na na ko -ap applicable ba sa kanila. Baka naman kasi uh, yung sinet natin ground rules is sobrang uh, unrealistic na para sa uh, mga kids natin. So, uh, set ground rules na kasama yung mga kids nyo. But of course, nasa, nasa parents pa rin kung ano yung a uh, final na rules na iseset niyo sa family. So, example ng mga ground rules na pwede nating i-follow is ayun uh, nga kanina, 2 hours before bedtime wala ng gadgets, pwede mo nang i-confiscate or kunin yung mga gadgets, then ibabalik mo na lang on the other day and then pwede rin na uh, during meal time as in walang gadgets, mapa parents, mapag uh, kids, walang gadgets. So, use nyo yung meal time na yun para mag-usap-usap kayo, mag-bonding kayo. And of course, we can set rules like sa mga uh, TV, yung mga laptop, uh, nasa common area, kung saan pwede mo siyang ma mabantayan, pwede mo siyang matignan kung ano yung mga sites na ino-open niya, ano yung mga ginagawa niya. Uh, you can supervise them. So, those are samples lang. So, marami pang ground rules na pwedeng i-apply. So, ano yung mas applicable, ano yung mas realistic sa inyo. And of course, fa friend and follow, but do not stop your kids or children. So, know their activities, pero wag naman natin silang yung parang stalker na yung dating kasi wala namang tao na gustong may stalker siya, di ba? Na lahat na lang ng kilos binamatsyagan, lahat ng kilos bantay sarado. Huwag naman tayong uh, ganon parents. So, ang tendency kasi, once you stalk, minsan may inis pa yung mga kids mo. Parang OA ka na. Overreacting ka sa mga posting niya. Overreacting ka sa mga ginagawa social media. If you know na may maling ginawa, try na... Uh, private message mo siya or kausapin mo siya personally kasi minsan uh, kakastalk natin, minsan may nakita lang tayo isang post ng anak mo on social media na feeling mo hindi tama, so gagawin mo papagalita mo siya, magko-comment ka doon, ang tendency na pahiya mo yung kids mo and then yung hindi mo alam na billions uh, meron pala siyang 3,000 online friends, so yung 3,000 ay nakita yung comment mo na napinagalita mo siya. So, napapahiya yung kids mo. So, ang tendency, i-unfriend ka niya or i-block ka niya or isi-set niya yung mga posting niya na uh, hindi mo makikita. So, wag naman gano'n na uh, parang parang dumating yung point na ayaw na ng anak mo na maging friend ka online. And also, baka mamaya yung mga gano'ng times na napagalita mo siya online, maging cause yun na ma-cyberbully siya. Gamitin yun sa kanya. And let's have them independent on using their social media accounts as much as possible na kampante tayo or alam natin na natuturo natin and napapractice ng kids natin yung pagiging good digital citizen. So kids, remember... Uh, na let's practice being good digital citizen. So, alam na natin yung do's and don'ts. So, tayong mga parents, once na confident tayo na yung anak natin are good digital users, good digital citizens. So, hindi na kailangan mag-overreact. Pero, if follow pa rin natin.
Kasi hindi natin alam, may mga online perpetrators, may mga uh, cyberbullies dyan, di ba? So, kailangan pa rin natin protektahan yung mga anak natin. Kailangan pa rin naman natin makita kung ano yung mga activities nila online, di ba? Baka may problem na sila sa online nila nire-release, di nila nasasabi sa inyo. So, important na we friend, follow, pero hindi tayo nag i stock ng mga anak natin kasi baka mamaya may tatlong account yan. Sa tatlong account, isa lang yung friend ka or friend yung parents niya. Pero yung account na yun na friend niya, yung parents niya, hindi niya masyadong ginagamit. Kasi pinagtataguan niya yung parents na nag masyadong OA, masyadong nag-overstock. And of course, next is explore, share, and celebrate. So explore together online. Pwede naman kayo uh, together in a limited time, mag-online together, like uh, share ideas or something na interested kayo, manood kayo ng uh, mga movies, stream kayo ng mga uh, videos, and also pwede rin kayo yung mga usong-uso ngayon, yung mga uh, mother and daughter or yung mga uh, father and son na mga, uh, mga dance uh, video, di ba? Pwede naman. So you can celebrate or explore yung mga online with them. And also, uh, you can use that uh, technology to connect with other relatives or friends uh, to do virtual banding, mga online kwentuhan, or parang reunion, di ba? So, uh, so, nagkakaroon kayo ng bonding, na explore na enjoy nyo yung time together. But of course, explore, share, and celebrate offline. So, maraming activities offline na pwede kayong mag-bonding, pwede kayong maging, uh, pwede nyo gawin together. So, we should encourage more on physical activities pa din. And also, last uh, step to be a good digital parent is be a role model. So, model responsible tayo. So, do you know that your kids, your children, parents and guardians are watching you? So, if you are seeing na too much na yung paggamit ng gadgets nila, baka sa inyo nila nakukuha yun, di ba? So, let's try na sa bahay, baka mamaya nakita nila si daddy, online gamers. Pero yung pagiging online gamers niya, yes, sobra na pala. So, parang addicted na rin. And then, nakita niya si mami, masyado makichika sa Facebook, sa mga social media. So, baka sa inyo nila nakikita yung mga ganong attitude or behavior. So, kailangan uh, sa atin pa lang nag na, nakikita na nila sa atin yung magandang uh, attitude and behavior uh, while doing online. So, parents tayo yung role model. <clears throat> uh, so, kailangan makita nila sa atin na tayo is may good digital habits, may digital balance tayo, and of course, makita nila sa atin na tayo yung model behavior kasi uh, we practice good digital citizens. Practice what you preach. <clears throat> so next, relate naman natin this time of new normal. So, according to the data of We Are Social and Hootsuite, uh, last July, 2020 lang, the global digital growth. So, this is yung mga uh, in, with total populations na nag-increase versus dun sa uh, last year, July 2019, with the total populations of 81, per, 81 million or 1.1% increase, may nag-increase na 121 million uh, mobile phone users. So, nag-increase ng 1.1 ang populations, pero 2.4 ang nag-increase na mobile users. And of course, uh, last year and this year, may 346 million na increase. And social media users with 376 million increase. So, 10.5% yung increase ng social media users this year. And also, daily time spent with media. So, some of our kids, baka uh, more than na uh, yung uh, digital use nila. So, this is uh, ages 16 to 20, 64 years old. Uh, 
Using the internet, the average amount is 6 hours, 42 minutes. And then social media, 2 hours, 22 minutes. And television, watching television, 3 hours, 22 minutes. And then streaming music is 1 hour to 31 minutes. And using a game console with 1 hour, 10 minutes. So ito yung average lang. So some of the kids today is more than the average. So nag overuse na sila. Na na cross na nila yung fine line na ito yung average lang. So nag exceed sila dito sa average na to. And of course, social media use around the world. So 3.96 billion are active use active users of social media and with 51% na social media penetrations, 10.5% with annual growth in total number of social media users and so on. And social media behaviors, so still uh, ages 16 to 64 years old, 99% uh, they visited social network or messaging ser services and 88% actively engaged or contributed to social media in the past month. So, mga uh, June. And of course, average amount of time per day spent on social media is 2 hours 22 minutes. But most of our kids, most of our parents, even elders, diba, nag exceed sa 2 hours and 22 minutes a day. And of course, uh, average number of social media accounts per internet user is 8.8 .8 and 40% social media for work purposes. So, nag-increase din yung for work purposes. Kasi, diba, may mga work from home na. And next is increased social media use. So as we see, average is 43%. And with the lowest, Germany, 19% of social media use due to COVID-19. But if we look at it, Philippines with 64%. So last year, uh, tayo pa rin yung nangunguna. So tayo yung uh, larger user, largest user of social media. So, increased social media use by age group. So, 16, so 24 years old. So, kabilang dito yung mga anak natin. Hanggang 16 to 24 years old. So, they spend more time using social media. 58%. So, sila yung pinaka uh, users ng mga social media. And 44%, 25 to 34 years old. And so on, hanggang 27% yung mga 55 to 64 years old. So, uh, tayo, tayong parents hanggang mga uh, mga elders natin, we use social media. Pero ang pinaka-users, pinaka-large amount na gumagamit nito is yung mga kids natin. And so, social media are interactive computer-mediated technologies that facilitate or sharing of information, ideas, career interests, and other forms of expression, virtual communications, and networks. So, nandiyan yung mga iba't ibang klaseng social media, Facebook, YouTube, uh, Twitter, Instagram. Uh, we have uh, messaging apps, yung mga WhatsApp, mga FB Messenger. We also have mga TikTok, mga video streaming, Netflix. So, those are you know, social media. So, we have benefits. Alam naman natin na technology, we benefited from it. So, first benefits niya which is sobrang uh, useful, lalo na itong pandemic, is yung connectivity. So, this is the beauty of social media. We can connect to someone kahit malayo pa sila. Kahit nasa ibang country, nasa ibang uh, time zone pa tayo, di ba? We can connect with them. And, of course, education, lalo na ngayon, uh, we have the blended learning. We use uh, social media para makakonect din sa mga students natin, right? Para i-disseminate yung mga ibang information. And of course, education kasi uh, 
marami tayong nakukuhang online training, mga webinars, marami tayong mga nakukuhang mga information on internet on, or social media. And of course, uh, promotion where you can promote your business, you can promote your advocacies because uh, social media is the largest audience. And also, uh, help. You can ask help. You can share issues. Then you can uh, request for help for uh, in terms of money, in terms of services, uh, help find you mga missing relatives. Diba? Ang daming ganun. Ginagamit nila yung social media to post yung mga nawawalang anak, nawawalang kapatid. So, it helps a lot. And also, social media helps us in for information and updates. So, we use social media for information, yung mga news. May marami na uh, mga nagre-release ng mga uh, news, updated news on social media pages ng mga <clears throat> iba't ibang resources. And of course, no, well, cause pwede tayong mag-create ng mga uh, activities for donations, for mga uh, promote uh, non-government offices na gumagawa ng mga uh, novel cause or and of course awareness like this one mga webinars, napakaraming kind of awareness uh, like yung <clears throat> nakikita natin, lalo na itong pandemic, di ba? And of course as a good digital citizen we can help government fight crime Kasi we can, uh, uh, we can report kung ano yung mga nakikita nating mga. Pwede tayong magsumbong pag may nakikita tayong hindi tama, nakikita tayong mali, or tayo mismo yung nagiging victim. So, na-help natin yung government na uh, mapad, matulungan natin yung government na mahuli yung mga gumagawa ng hindi tama. And of course, building community. So, you can join online groups, pwede yung uh, with kung ano yung mga interest nyo, share professions kayo, mga common passions. So, you can, uh, yung circle mo lumalaki dahil dito sa social media. But, aside from benefits, sabi nga, there are a lot of benefits, pero there are a lot of uh, dangers on social media. So, ito yung common dangers. So, first is cyberbullying. So, <clears throat> Cyberbullying is use of technology to harass, threaten, and barns of or target person. So, pwedeng direct and indirect. Pwedeng uh, sa isang tao, isesend mo or ipopost mo sa wall niya kung yung, gusto, yung victim mo. Or pwedeng indirect, pwedeng sa isang group chat, sa isang group uh, or page, dun nyo siya ibubuli. So, dun nyo siya mag-spread ng rumors, dun kayo mag-popost ng mga Photoshop images. So, Pwedeng direct and indirect ang cyberbullying. And cyberbullying isang malaking uh, issue. Kasi uh, marami nang nabibiktim ng mga cyberbullying. Pero uh, hin lalo na mas mahirap, hindi mo alam kung sino yung nagsasyberbully sa'yo, di ba? And it is a serious issue, lalo na pwede ito mauwi sa harassment. So there are uh, mga issues or cases na nangyayari dahil hindi na nila nakayanan yung cyberbullying na ginagawa sa kanila, ang tendency nagkakaroon siya ng depressions and kapag hindi nagapan, hindi agad na check ng parents, ng guardians or hindi niya nasabi so walang mag-help sa kanya, ang mangyayari magkocommit na lang siya ng suicide so ganun yung harm ng cyberbullying mas harmful pa to kaysa dun sa bullying nangyayari physically Kasi ang naapektuhan uh, nito ay hindi lang uh, mental health, di ba? Na napakahirap uh, kalabanin kapag mental health na yung naapektuhan sa atin. And next is catfishing, wherein a person can, can pretend to be someone they're not. And then they steal your profile picture, your account, or yung gagawa sila ng fake account, your social media, and then they can use this para man loko, para ma makapang trick sa ibang tao. And <clears throat> next is scam. Sa scam during uh, pandemic, napakaraming scammers ang lumabas. 
after mga like after uh, business trans- transactions napaka smooth nung conversation niyo ng transactions then nagpay ka na nagbayad ka na nagdeposit ka then after that biglang wala na deactivated na yung account or hindi ka na nire-replyan so na scam ka na wala yung pera mo na hindi dumating yung items sa iyo or yung pagkasunduan niyo so and daming gumaga so the since social media is now yung ginagamit as marketplace Diba? So, daming lumalabas dyan na scammers. So, kailangan maging uh, maalam tayo kung, pa, kung i-check natin muna kung legit bang seller yan, legit bang buyer yan, or check din natin yung mga reviews ng mga dating nakatransactions niya. Kasi baka mamaya, uh, scammers lang pala yan. Sabi nga, too good to be true, di ba? So, parang ang ganda-ganda ng offer niya, yung pala, i-scamin ka lang niya. And of course, is pornography. Since sabi ko, napangadaming inappropriate na content online. So, pornography, a lot of oh, porn videos, mga images, other materials, accessible yan sa internet. So, pwede rin na yung iba ginagawa, peer-to-peer sharing. So, ipapasa-pasa nila yan, yung mga uh, porn uh, materials. And, Ang nakakatakot, baka mamaya yung mga younger kids natin while using online, ah, using devices and using internet, biglang may lumabas or may makita silang mga pornographic materials na hindi naman dapat nilang makita. So, kailangan mag-guide natin sila, mabantayan natin yung mga kids natin kung ano yung mga nakikita nila or na-visit nilang mga site. And next is sexting. So, it is sending nude or semi-nude images as well as sexually explicit text messages. So, about 12% of youth aged uh, 10 to 19 years old, uh, they have sent a sexual photo to someone else. So, according to survey yon, so teens need to know that once uh, content is shared, sabi ko nga, may digital footprint, so hindi na yan mawawala. So, and, meron din mga cases na nag-send sila ng uh, hindi, uh, medyo hindi magandang photos with their uh, friends, with someone. So, ang gagawin, iba-blackmail sila. Gagamitin nila yung mga send the photos to blackmail para manghingi ng pera or para may iba pang hingil- hilingin sa kanila. And of, so part of digital good citizen, di ba? We should be aware, we should be mindful, and we should know kung ano lang dapat yung mga sinishare natin, sinisend natin. So let's practice digital citizenship. And of course, online abuse or online sexual exploitations. So maybe yung iba hindi aware na may mga offender, like may mga perpetrators dyan na naghahanap lang ng victim nila, especially children so may mga pedophile so pornographic materials which includes children can be available online and sometimes binebenta pa nila yan sa dark web and during lockdown sabi nga nila nagdouble globally yung uh, cases ng mga online sexual exploitations and even babies ginagamit po sila sa mga gantong uh, uh, online sexual act so nakakatakot na pwedeng maging danger yung uh, maging uh, victim yung anak mo kasi uh, pwedeng uh, yung mga perpetrators na yan nag-check lang yan ng mga profile pictures nag scroll yan ng pwedeng ma-target and then once na may nakita silang pwedeng i-target so is mag a friend uh, makikipag-chat na yan so sa umpisa pwedeng kukunin lang yung loob mag, uh, magiging mag magiging ano good conversations and then until na makapalagay ang loob na ng mga anak nyo so magaan na yung loob niya comfortable na siya nag trust na siya dun sa someone na yun uh, yung pala perpetrator so uumpisahan na niya na mag ask ng mga sexually uh, questions messages uh, so minsan maghihingi na din niya ng mga hindi magagandang photos like yung mga uh, Photos ng body parts, photos na naka-nude or semi-nude. So, baka yung mga kids natin, 
uh, male or female children can be a victim of online sexual exploitation. So, maraming perpetrators online. So, uh, and minsan nakakalungkot na parents or relatives, sila pa yung nagiging uh, cause or pumipilit sa mga kids na nila na pumasok sa gantong bagay, pinagkakakitaan na nila. Na dahil ang reason nila, hindi naman daw natatouch yung anak nila physically so hindi na harm but hindi nila alam uh, mentally or psychologically ang laki ng epekto ng mga uh, na-victim ng online sexual exploitation na ito. And of course, uh, those are just common. So napakarami pa pong dangers on social media. Dahil sabi nga social media, ito yung parang largest platform na ang daming users, sabi nga di ba kanina, 8.8 billions are using social media. And hindi lahat ng gumagamit ng social media is may good intentions. So marami po dyan, nagpapanggap lang, kukunin lang ang loob ng mga anak nyo, and then gagawin na nila yung mga uh, hindi magandang activities sa anak nyo. And of course, uh, this is just a bonus. Uh, since last three days yata nag-release uh, ang cybersecurity, DICT Cybersecurity Bureau na advisory on the Google class, uh, Classroom um, guidelines. So, naisipan ko lang kahapon na isama ito. So, bonus slides. So, let's have first, ligtas na paggamit ng Google Classroom para sa online learning. Since lahat tayo as nasa online learning ngayon and medyo struggles minsan kung paano natin or worried tayo kung paano natin ma secure yung mga anak natin habang nasa loob sila ng online classroom. So, para sa mga teachers, so here are guidelines. So, first, gawin private ang iyong session. So, Abisuan ng mga inyong classmate na huwag i-post or i-share. So sabi nga, paggagawa ng mga meeting or class schedule or always make sure na naka-private ang meeting and never share. Uh, mapa-teacher or mapa-students, mapa-parents, never share, never publicize the meeting ID, password and other meeting details or class details. Kasi baka mamaya may hindi inaasahang pangyayari, may mga manggulo sa atin. So, uh, let's secure yung mga online classroom natin since dyan na uh, yan na yung isa sa new normal na magiging uh, environment ng mga kids natin. So, secure the online classroom by setting class code or password, yung mga meeting ID, secure natin, yung class link, Uh, pwede nating isend via email or via email invite. So, uh, pili lang kung kanino natin i-share yung mga meeting uh, details na ito. And to avoid unwanted guests or hindi na invite ng mga participants. Also, by that, you can have your attendance check kung lahat na lang nag-join or pumasok sa class is registered or listed. So, kanina kung mapapansin nyo sa mga nag-join dito, uh, before joining, may lumabas, di ba? Someone is asking to join your meeting, di ba? So, may mga gano'n. Ibig sabihin, uh, naka-on yung uh, settings nyo na hindi lahat ng gustong pumasok sa classroom na ito is papasok. So, dito, malilimit nyo, maiisa-isa nyo with your attendance, kung sino lang yung registered and kung sino lang yung dapat na uh, part or participants ng uh, classroom session nyo. And also, uh, yun nga yung may attendance check and also uh, paalalahanan natin, tama yung kaninang ginawa before the start of these sessions. Uh, we have the guidelines or yung parang tinatawag na uh, Parang tinatawag na reminders, ba? Diba? Na kailangan natin gawin during this uh, session. So, uh, pwede natin ding uh, i-mute muna or i-off yung mga cameras. Pwede natin uh, sa paggawa pa lang ng mga meeting link or class link, uh, nakakonfigure na yung mga kung dapat i-on and off. So, i-on na, i-off natin yung mga uh, mic and uh, cameras upon joining. So, i-open lang siya or i-allow lang siya 
if necessary and also pwede namang gamitin ng raise hand kung uh, kailangan mag-recite or kailangan ma may questions <clears throat> and also we can use yung standard naming so we can uh, para na rin to sa uh, attendance check natin we can use kunwari a uh, ascot aurora state college of technology underscore as last name and then uh, First name, so by that, madaling makikita ni teacher sino yung uh, baka may unwanted guest na dyan or baka mayroong uh, hindi nakapasok sa classroom nyo. And of course, uh, yung mga students natin na uh, kung paano gumamit ng Google Classroom or yung paano, uh, -ex paano natin to um, ma-maximize and ma-secure. And... <clears throat> Yun nga, kung hindi kailangan i-on and off ang mic and uh, cameras, huwag natin buksan. And hawakan natin yung control ng screen sharings and ng mga recordings. Huwag natin hayaan na isa sa mga students natin lang ang gagawa nito. Or tayo mga guro, alam ko doble uh, challenge to and doble responsibilities to sa inyo. But kailangan po natin ma-moderate or ma-monitor Uh, kung ano yung nangyayari sa online classroom. And also, ang mahalagang informations, ang personal informations ng mga students, hindi po natin kailangang ilabas. Kailangan natin protektahan ng mga ito. And of course, yung isecure po natin yung file sharing. Baka may mga makalabas na mga uh, files nyo na hindi naman dapat lumabas sa inyo. And iwasan po natin gumamit ng mga third-party applications habang may sessions. So baka yung third-party applications na yan, may mga malware, may mga pwedeng magamit yan para makagulo sa mga Google Classroom nyo. And of course, mapagmasin, maging maingat, baka may mga uh, baka may mga hindi dapat na or may mga cyber attacks na na pwedeng mangyari sa loob. And tayo, while during the online classroom, mga teachers from time to time, pwede po natin monitor yung mga guests na, o mga students natin online. And also, check po natin yung mga chat box. Baka may nangyayari na sa chat box na hindi tama. Baka may bullying na nangyayari or may mga hindi tamang nangyayari dyan. Or may mga questions ng mga students And next is, hmm, <clears throat> kung may mga hin may, kung hindi nyo naiwasan, may nakapasok ng mga unwanted guests, pwede nyo po silang uh, i-remove agad-agad para hindi na ma makagulo. And of course, kung may mga hindi nangyaring tama, pwede po nating i-report sa mga kinauukulan. And of course, let's practice cyber hygiene and cyber security. Guro, uh, teachers, Uh, students and of course parents and of course ito para sa mga students and magulang hindi lang ang teachers ang may responsibility uh, para sa Google Classroom or online classroom tayong mga students as tayo yung mga uh, participants may mga responsibilities din tayo also this is part of our being good digital citizen kailangan sumunod tayo sa mga reminders guidelines sa loob ng klase Sundin natin yung mga teachers natin. Huwag naman natin silang pahirapan. Ang hirap po mag-moderate ng uh, isang classroom session na online. And of course, laging pumasok sa klase sa tamang oras. Dapat bawal din ang late. Walang absent, walang late kung hindi valid ang reasons. And of course, uh, panatilihin natin naka-off ang mic, camera kung hindi kailangan. And mag-avoid tayo ng mga any distractions kasi nakaka-distract tayo sa iba nating classmates. And of course, kailangan din nating aralin yung mga functions like chat box, kung paano mag-raise hand, paano tayo mag-ask ng questions sa mga teachers natin para hindi na tayo nanganga pa kung paano gagamitin yung Google Classrooms. Kasi ito na yung new normal na mode of learning nyo. And of course, Secure your account. So, upang maiwasan ng paggamit ng ibang tao, secure your account, your private 
account na gagamitin nyo sa pagpasok sa online classroom. And huwag nyo ipagamit yung account nyo sa kung sino-sino. And of course, gumamit ng strong passwords. Uh, sabi, ang 8 passwords is hindi na ngayon applicable. Madali na rin i-hack. So, uh, as much as possible, use 12 character combinations of uh, small letters and capital letters or upper and lower case and then uh, numbers and also symbols. You can use that as a strong password. And of course, do not share your pass password to anyone. And of course, maging mapagmatsyag din tayo sa mga emails. Baka may nakiklik tayong ibang emails. Phishing emails pala, akala natin, galing kay teacher yung pala, uh, phishing emails. And of course, iwasang mag-link at mag-download ng mga attachments na hindi galing or hindi legit. Na baka makakompromise ng inyong mga devices or accounts. And of course, suruin mabuti yung URL na papasukin nyo or ikiklik nyo. Baka phishing din yan. Baka i-redirect lang kayo sa ibang emails. And of course, huwag din gumamit ng third party app. Baka si teacher uh, sumusunod sa safety, may uh, cyber hygiene and security, pero baka ikaw naman, uh, yung mga students, hindi mo pala nasa secure yung account mo, hindi mo pala nasa secure yung mga applications na ginagamit mo. So, tulungan tayo, teamwork po tayo para uh, nasa secure natin yung security ng online classroom natin. And of course, pag may mga technical problem like internet connections, device malfunctions, uh, mga audio and visual, uh, uh, erase natin agad yung concern kay teacher or kay prof para magawa ng actions agad or matulungan kayo sa sessions and subjects. And of course, always uh, update your Google Apps na gagamitin or your online platform arms uh, apps, baka kasi mamaya outdated na siya. So, may mga security features na hindi na na-adapt. So, kailangan uh, lagi tayong updated. So, yun lang. So, uh, connect with us. Uh, please like and uh, subscribe to our uh, social media pages, Facebook, Twitter, and YouTube. So, yun lang. So, once again, uh, iwan ko lang. Your cell phone has already replaced your watch, camera, calendar, and alarm clock. But don't let it replace your family. Iba pa rin ang family. So yun lang po. Thank you. Hello po, Sir Joseph. Hello po, ma'am. Ayan. Thank you po, ma'am. Thank you. So, thank you, ma'am Diana, for your very timely and very relevant discussion this afternoon na talaga namang magagamit natin ngayong new normal. So again, ma'am, thank you. That concludes our topic for this afternoon's session. And now let us move on to our question and answer, wherein ma'am Diana will answer the questions that our team have collected from our participants. Ayan. So we have here our first question, ma'am Diana, from our participants. Wait lang. Ito po yung unang tanong. Sa Anti-Bullying Act of 2013 po ay requirements po sa elementary at secondary school. Paano po kapag may case ng cyberbullying pero outside the jurisdiction of the school? Ano pong batas kaya ang pwedeng ma-apply? Hello. Uh, I believe if it's outside the jurisdiction of the school, we can report it sa mga authorities like PNP, Anti-Cybercrime Group, uh, PI. Meron din silang mga 
Cybercrime Group, and of course, DOJ, and also to DICT uh, National Computer Emergency Response Team. We can assist yung mga magsisend ng mga uh, case or report. Ma-assist namin kayo kung paano namin kayo uh, tutulungan. Ayan, thank you po, ma'am. We have here another question, ma'am. Currently po, sa Wi-Fi po namin, nakablock na ang mga porn sites sa web browser using Open DNS Family Shield. Kaso, na-access pa rin yung mga porn videos sa YouTube app. Paano po ma-block yung mga porn videos sa YouTube app, ma'am? Hello, sir. Sir, as far as I know, dun sa my YouTube settings mismo, uh, pwede tayo dun mag-restrict. Uh, pwede natin explore yung settings. Kasi ang ginagawa ko dun sa daughter ko is naka-restrict siya uh, uh, sa certain uh, age, kung ano lang yung mga appropriate age na may mga ganong feature sa YouTube. Eh. Thank you po, ma'am. And this will be our last question. Gusto po sana sa specific time ay not allowed na makakonect sa internet yung mga mobile device ng mga anak ko. Paano po yun gagawin? Ayon. Kung sa mga uh, Wi-Fi, yes, we can uh, uh, limit naman kung ano yung mga uh, devices na pwedeng mag-connect. And of course, first, uh, set natin yung password na hindi alam ng mga kids nyo kung ayaw nyo silang kumunek. And then, uh, you can set uh, you can set kung ano yung mga devices na iaalaw mo lang din. Ayan, thank you po, ma'am. And that concludes our Q&A for this afternoon's webinar. Again, let us give a virtual round of applause to our research speaker who shared and imparted her knowledge about digital parenting. Again, thank you po, ma'am. Let us now move on to the, award, the awarding of certificate of appreciation to our resource speaker. Let me first read the content of our certificate. Republic of the Philippines, Aurora State College of Technology, Zabali, Baler, Aurora, Philippines. Certificate of Appreciation is hereby given to Diana Jean P. Faustino for imparting her valuable knowledge as a resource speaker on the webinar entitled Digital Parenting, conducted by the Department of Information and Communication Technology DICT Luzon Cluster 2, Aurora Provincial Office, in cooperation with Aurora State College of Technology. Given this October 30, 2020 at Baler Aurora, signed by Dr. Yutikyo L. Ratakia Jr., SUC President. Again, thank you, ma'am. Thank you, sir. And for our closing remarks, let us call on Engineer Ravenal A. De Jesus, the Provincial Head of the DICT Aurora Provincial Office of the Department of Information and Communications Technology. Congratulations for having successfully extended the webinar conducted by the Department of Information and Communications Technology and Aurora State College of Technology. 
this webinar is only one of the components that fulfill the vision mission of both PICD and ASPA. Specifically, the capacity building you have undergone gives you ICT knowledge and skills necessary for our daily lives, especially nowadays that we are about to enter the new normal. Sincere appreciation to your continued support and patronage to the projects and programs of BICT. Hoping to see you soon to the future projects of BICT and ASCOT. Mabuhay! Thank you, Engineer De Jesus, for your message. And again, thank you, Ma'am Diana Jean Faustino, for being our resource speaker for this afternoon. Again, thank you very much, Ma'am. And we are looking forward to be with you again in our next webinars. And let me share my screen first. Okay, so just wait for a second. We're just having some technical difficulties here on my laptop. And there it goes.
And can you see my screen? Sorry. Can everyone see my screen? Yeah, okay. I'm back. And again, to our participants, our second webinar code is capital D D, P, and W. Again, our, code, our second webinar code is, again, this will be used in answering the post-evaluation that you will answer after this webinar for your e-certificates, okay? Again, to our participants, Certificates will be provided to those who have attended the full duration of this webinar, answered the post-evaluation form, passed the quiz with at least 70% points, used the webinar code that was shown a while ago to access the post-evaluation form, and please input valid and active email address when filling out the post-evaluation form the, or the deadline for these forms is tomorrow at four in the afternoon, and it can be accessed on the link that can be seen on your screens, bit.ly slash eval dash DICT ASCOT dash DigiBar. And our webinar can also be accessed and replay with the use of the link bit.ly slash live dash DICT ASCOT dash digipar and please follow us on facebook for the latest trends and updates aurora state college of technology dash ascot our official ascot fb page the department of information and communications technology dict department of information and communications technology luzon cluster 2 dict aurora luzon cluster 2 and DICT Cybersecurity Luzon Cluster 2. And for our words of wisdom from Newton Lee, as the world is increasingly interconnected, everyone shares the responsibility of securing cyberspace. Again, thank you all for your active participation in our webinar. Again, this is Eliseo Joseph M. Nakar from Aurora State College of Technology. Thank you, everyone, and God bless. Keep safe.